We know about similar solar heaters with mirrors which must constantly rotate according to the movement of the sun across the sky from morning to evening. However, such rotations of the mirrors are not necessary in the cases of these solar heaters of my solar station, but unfortunately, I have to make such changes in the vertical angle of inclination of their mirrors about 50 times a year. This was my next step towards even simpler solar heaters. And these mirrors require those changes in their vertical angle of only 10 times a year. This video will talk about my next step, and this is an even simpler and cheaper solar heater which does not need those changes in the vertical angle, and its mirrors are absolutely motionless all 12 months of the year, and here we see that it heated the water to a temperature of 93 degrees Celsius. We can notice that this solar heater is the union of two very simple devices, and this is the first device which is a receiver and consists of black and transparent polymer films costing several tens of cents per square meter. I described this receiver in one of my old videos, and it is capable of heating water without any mirrors, and for example, now we see that solar energy heated the water to a temperature of 62 degrees Celsius. But this temperature rises drastically if we add this mirror made of cheap reflective film at 20 cents per square meter, and the film gives this spot of solar radiation which drastically increases the operating temperatures and heat production of our cheap receiver, and here we can notice the spot of solar radiation from the mirrors. We can understand that the cheapness of this solar heater leads us to very cheap solar heat. And this table shows how much heat is produced by one square meter of our receivers during one year, and it shows the cost of our solar heat for the United States, India, and Europe. It is obvious that the cost of the heat depends on this cost of capital and labor, and we see that the higher the heating temperature, the less the annual heat production and the higher the cost of the solar heat. This cost of our heat is approximately equal to the cost of heat from natural gas, and these cases correspond to very cheap solar heat which is about four times cheaper than gas. These calculations take into account the short lifespan of these mirrors, but their lifespan is significantly longer than we might think, and I will talk a little about my testing of these mirrors at the end of this video, and for example, now we see how my cheap mirrors produce steam during cold weather. In addition, I remind you that these mirrors are very cheap and they can be replaced easily and quickly. Of course, Hurricane will destroy my cheap mirrors and carry away their remains into a trap around our solar station, but it is good because this frame for our mirrors has the right to be weak and cheap due to the fact that it is designed to withstand strong winds and not a hurricane. Here we see water inlet. And this is water outlet. We understand that these solar heaters must form long rows, with a length of several tens of meters, along this west-east line. Of course, I measured the energy parameters of my mirror solar heater, and these are the results of my measurements, and we can compare them with these results of my measurements of the parameters of the same solar heater but without the mirrors. We see that adding the mirrors does not change this parameter but increases this coefficient, and my theoretical interpretation of the increase in this coefficient is described here, where we can see various causes which affect the increase in the efficiency due to the mirrors. I use this interpretation to predict the heat production of these calculations, but I downgraded these factors to account for the dirt, aging and other causes, and these are the coefficients which I used when I did these calculations. I must clarify that these energy parameters were measured for my solar heater with these geometric parameters. And when the sun was 50 degrees above the horizon, and we must understand that changing these geometric parameters and the height of the sun will change this coefficient. Let's see how the location of this spot of solar radiation from the mirrors changes during year, and now is the summer solstice, in June, and the spot is here. But further the height of the sun above the horizon decreases, and this is the situation in three weeks. And now another three weeks have passed. We see that the spot is gradually moving in this direction due to the decrease in the height of the sun, and now, 
At the end of August, the spot is still within the confines of my receiver, but now, in mid-September, this part of its solar radiation is already located outside these boundaries of the receiver. Now I will temporarily change this vertical angle of the mirror, and we see that the spot of solar radiation from my mirrors is again within the confines of the receiver. However, I remind you that this possibility of solving the problem is not interesting to us because our mirror must be fixed all 12 months of the year, and therefore let's go back to that old vertical angle, and let's look at the position of the spot at the same vertical angle of the mirrors in September, October, and December. Of course, we can increase the receiver to these dimensions if we want our mirrors work well 6 months a year, from the vernal equinox on March 21st to the autumn equinox on September 21st, but it is obvious that the October spot will already be outside the large receiver. In addition, we can notice that the closer to winter, the spot spreads more, and we must make an effort to see it. I remind you that these experiments are taking place in Ukraine, at 50 degrees north latitude. If we want our mirrors work well on December and January, the mirrors must have a similar large tilt, and now is the beginning of January, and the Ukrainian sun barely rises above the horizon, but the spot from my mirrors is here. However, these mirrors will not work well in spring and summer but we can reduce the tilt of the mirrors to this angle, although we understand that we must also increase the dimensions of the receiver to these limits. This is the location of the spot at the winter solstice, but it is the case of the same vertical angle of the mirror at the equinoxes in September or March. Unfortunately, this tilt of the mirrors will not work well in the summer when the angle of the sun above the horizon is large. However, Let's go back to this table of the cost of our solar heat, and I want to clarify that our solar heater for this case in Munich has these geometrical parameters. The rays from the summer sun are ideally within the receiver, but these are rays at the equinoxes in March or September, and we understand that our mirror is not working the period from October to March. This is not a big disadvantage because now I am showing the climate of Munich and we see that Germany has very few sunny days in autumn and winter, and besides, our receiver will not work due to frost and snow, and I described these phenomena in that old video. This case for India was calculated on the basis of our solar heater with these geometric parameters, and our mirrors work well on winter when the spot of their solar radiation is within the receiver not far from its southern border. These are the rays at the equinoxes in March or September, but this is the situation at the summer solstice in June, and we understand that our mirrors will not work well in May, June, and July. However this is not a big disadvantage because this Indian climate data tells us that these summer months have few sunny days. Let's analyze this case of a desert in the southern United States. And this is a calculation for these geometric parameters of our solar heater when the mirrors reflect well these rays of the summer sun, but this is the sun's rays at the equinox in March or September, and it is obvious that the mirrors will not work 6 months a year, not far from winter, and therefore we have such heat production for temperatures of 45, 60 and 75 degrees Celsius. We can notice that our solar heater produces very little heat during this period from October to March, and the vertical angle of our mirror is the first cause of this phenomenon. The second cause is the large heat loss from the receiver due to these low ambient temperatures compared to more than 30 degrees in summer. Here we see the third cause, and the low position of the sun above the horizon radically reduces the arrival of its radiation inside the receiver directly from the sun, and not from the mirrors. This variant of the receiver was prepared by me for solar cooling, when we need cheap heat only during this period of the need for air conditioning. One of my goals is to offer a very cheap version of this famous solar cooling system for an American school in Arizona, and this system was built 7 years ago with a cost of $10 million on the basis of 5,000 square meters of solar collectors. I remind you that I have just described this first version of our solar heater for Phoenix in Arizona, and this is the second version for the same Phoenix, and this is the sun's rays at the winter solstice, and therefore our solar heater will work well in winter. 
Now I show the sun's rays at the equinox in March or September, and this is the rays at the summer solstice in June, and we understand that this second version of our heater will not work well in the summer. Let's look at the work of this version, and this is my calculation of its heat production with a temperature of 45 degrees Celsius per square meter of the receiver. We see that it is capable of producing heat in winter. But this production of its heat with temperatures of 60 and 75 degrees is less optimistic. Let's compare its heat production of 45 degrees Celsius with this calculation of heat production with the same temperature of 45 degrees. But from that first version of our solar heater, we see that our second version gives a more even heat production throughout the year, while the first version does not produce heat in winter, and it concentrates on the heat production in summer. This is a comparison of heat production and cost of heat, and we see that the economic parameters of the first version are much better. Thus, we understood that the heat production changes if we change these geometric parameters or this vertical angle of inclination of the mirrors. In addition, the heat production will change if we raise the mirror or shift it towards the north. This heat cost was calculated based on similar examples and these cost and spending for our receiver were analyzed in this my old video which described in detail this type of receiver and the features of its operation, but now I have worsened these parameters because our mirrors add the following features. First, additional solar radiation from the mirrors and high temperatures of the water drastically increase the aging of this black film, and now we see its condition after several months of its operation. We understand that the radiation and temperature quickly kill the strength of the black film, and therefore we must use more expensive black films and reduce the period of their planned replacements if we do not want to get into this situation, when one morning we see that the water has flowed out of our solar heater through a similar hole. It is obvious that the additional solar radiation from the mirrors accelerates aging of this transparent film too. The second feature was discovered thanks to this black trademark, and now we see the condition of a new transparent film near it, but it is the condition of the film after two months of its operation, and we can notice that my transparent film has become wrinkled near this location of the mark because its black paint absorbs the additional solar radiation from my mirrors, and this phenomenon heats it up significantly. I did not notice that this phenomenon melted my polyethylene film in this case but it is possible that the melting can happen in some other cases. The next feature is related to these north and south edges of our receiver. We see that my transparent film has visibly degraded near the edges due to the fact that the water does not take away the heat here, and therefore the film is heated to high temperatures by solar radiation from my mirrors. At the same time now we see that my transparent film remains in good condition at a distance of a few centimeters from the northern edge of the receiver because here its heat is transferred to the water inside the receiver. Of course, my black film is also degraded near the northern and southern edges of the receiver. Now I show my method of solving these problems, and we see that the south edge of my transparent film is covered with adhesive aluminum foil tape which reflects the solar radiation, and similar aluminum tape should be here, on the north edge of the receiver. Here we can see that the aluminum tape is also covering the side edges of my transparent film, and therefore now I will show the following experiment when I removed the aluminum tape from this area. And then one sunny day passed, and here we can notice the spot of solar radiation from my mirrors. It is the next day, and we see that the edges of my black film were melted by the additional solar radiation from my mirrors, while these areas were protected with the aluminum tape, and therefore we understand that the aluminum tape on the western and eastern edges of our receiver is unnecessary. Let's look at another one of my experiments, and this is a new transparent film and here I fixed marks. After that my solar heater was operated, and the western and eastern edges of its receiver were covered with these wooden battens, not that aluminum tape, and after a month of this operation, my receiver was in this state. We see that these marks are slightly shifted towards the center of the receiver, 
and this fact indicates that the length of my transparent film has decreased in this direction by about 1%, and we must take this phenomenon into account when we install the aluminum tape on the west and east edges of the transparent film. Now I am showing a crash test on my receiver, when it was without the water during one absolutely sunny day with a low sun above the horizon, when the ambient temperature was 14 degrees Celsius, and therefore we understand that it could be even worse if our receivers for some reason will be without water in summer when the sun is high above the horizon and the ambient temperature is more than 30 degrees. Let's look at the state of my receiver after this crash test and we see that my cheap polyethylene films were destroyed. That is why we understand that our receivers must be constantly filled with water, or we have to use more expensive black and transparent films of higher melting polymers. Interestingly, this expanded polystyrene remained in good condition after that crash test in November, but I think that similar crash test but in summer, can destroy the polystyrene. Let's go back to this example of calculating the cost of our heat. These cost and spending correspond to our mirrors, and now their value is approximate because I keep testing this type of cheap mirrors, and someday I will describe them in my future videos. These tests have been going on for over a year, and now I am looking for weak points of my mirrors to strengthen them in something like this. Nevertheless, now I can already predict that the lifespan of these cheap mirrors is approximately one year. That is why I am looking for the easiest and fastest methods to replace the mirrors, and I am aiming for the cheapest possible methods of fixing the top edge of the reflective film to this battens and the bottom edge of the film to this load. In addition, I am exploring another variant of our cheap mirror which has this additional cheap polymer film. This variant of the mirrors has a longer lifespan, and it is able to withstand stronger winds. 